councillors, the time is now 6.30 and I will declare the meeting open. I advise the, the public that in accordance with council's code of meeting practice, council meetings are recorded and webcast. The entire chamber is included in the audio recordings and visitors in the gallery may have their voice captured and webcast. By attending a council meeting, you can send to your speech or other personal information being captured, recorded and webcast. For this reason, I advise that any opinions expressed or statements made by individuals during the course of this meeting are the opinions or statements of those individual persons and are not opinions or statements of council. All persons should refrain from making any defamatory remarks. Council accepts no liability for any defamatory remarks made during the course of the council meeting. Furthermore, all persons should refrain from making public comments about another individual without seeking the consent of that individual beforehand. Council acknowledges the Wanneroo people as the traditional custodians of this land we are meeting on today, the Elders past, present and future. We also acknowledge the Awabakal people to the east and the Darkenjung people to the south and other Aboriginal peoples who now live within the Cessnock local government area. I would now like to invite Pastor Rachel Main from Beyond Church forward uh, to lead council in prayer. Councillors, please stand. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, Councillors and everybody. It's a great honour to be invited to pray tonight. And I thought that since I still memorise the council prayer from my eight and a half years around the table, I might bring a bit of fresh content tonight from the heart. So if you're participating, let's pray. God, I thank you for this beautiful place that we get to call home. I thank you for the people who have devoted their energies themselves to serving our city through their work and through the democratic process. God, I pray your blessing on this meeting tonight. I pray that we will treat one another with respect and kindness, even when we disagree. God, I pray for this city to be known for its prosperity and for that to have come from you. I pray for this to be a city that's marked by your favour, by strong families and strong relationships. And last of all, Lord God, <clears throat> I pray a special blessing on those tasked with the work of filling the potholes on Mount View Road. May their investment bring long-lasting returns. We thank you that we can bring all of our cares and concerns to you because of what Jesus has accomplished on our behalf. Amen. Amen. Have a great night. Thank you, Pastor Wayne. Uh, there are no apologies. Uh, are there any leave of absence requests? No requests. Uh, confirmation of the previous minutes uh, uh, of the ordinary meeting held on the 15th of June uh, and also the extraordinary meeting uh, held on the 29th of June. Uh, moving Councillor Sander, seconded Councillor Dunn. Uh, all those in favour, it's unanimous. Uh, disclosures of interest. Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I've got a, um, a non-pecuniary interest, less than significant for conflict, um, in report PE 38, 2022, um, in that my children have on occasion been to this um, child care centre. I choose to remain in, in the chamber as it will not affect my decision making. Thank you. Councillor Judd. Thank you, Mayor. I have a non-peculiar interest um, with the confidential section of the GMU 16 slash 2022. I choose to stay in the chamber um, as it won't affect my judgment call on voting. So that was a less than significant? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a conflict in BN 23, 2022, the Heritage Tourism. Uh, I declare a non-pecuniary interest less than significant for a reason that I own a business uh, that has a contract with the Cessnock Chamber of Commerce. I choose to remain in the chamber as it will not impact my decision making tonight due to the nature of the notice of motion. Thank you. Uh, 
there are no petitions that I'm aware of. Public address. Uh, first up, uh, I'll call Elena Lawrence, uh, speaking against the recommendation on report PE 32, 38 2022. Thank you, Ms. Lawrence. You'll have three minutes uh, and you'll hear a beat with slow minutes to go. Feel very okay. short. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Councillors and the officers. Thank you for the opportunity to address Council tonight. My name is Alina Lawrence and I'm the Centre Manager for the Centre at Curry Curry. The Centre is a non-for-profit organisation that provides quality before, after and vacation care to school-aged children from eight local schools. We have been operating out of the ambulance hall at Curry for the last 22 years. There is a growing need for our service and that is why we need to increase our enrolments and expand our operations. Our service caters for a high number of children that are currently in out of home care, as well as high number of children with disability and behaviours relating to exposure from domestic violence or neglect. Council officers have identified several issues issues um, for the DA to be refused. I will briefly address the main issues. A social impact assessment. I met with the former mayor and council officers to discuss the increase in numbers for the centre. The advice received at this meeting and confirmed in an email from council that a social impact assessment slash comment was only required. The comment was prepared in accordance with the requirements of council DCP as the centre is already operating with any, without any negative impact on the community, an assessment is deemed not necessary. Car parking. A traffic impact assessment was presented to Council. The assessment supported the development saying that the lack of on-site car parking area was not a major obstacle. In approving an increase in numbers for, of an essential community service due to the following. Timed curbside, sorry, times curbside parking, ensuring a regular turnover and low occupancy rate. Significant curbside parking is available to accommodate demand at peak drop-off times. Low occupancy rate of curbside parking spaces indicate the high turnover rate and drop-off usage. There has been no previous issues with carers um, using the available street parking along Lang Street. Council report suggests that the proposed development is not in the public interest. The development is a community facility which is utilised by a cross section of local residents. Without this service, many families would experience financial hardship as parents and caregivers would not be able to work. An assessment of the proposal against the requirements of childcare planning guidelines was not provided to Council. Our planning consultant had advised me that while this information was prepared, it was uploaded, it was not uploaded to the planning portal. An amendment statement of environmental effects has now been uploaded to planning portal. The proposed development does comply with the requirements of the guidelines. In conclusion, I respectfully seek. Um, we moved uh, for an extension of time, Councillor Moore, seconded Councillor Hawkins. Uh, all those in favour, please raise your hand. Uh, Councillor Jackson, Moores, Dunn, Burke, Grime, Sander, Hill, Hawkins, Painter, Watton, Jurd and Saval. Those against, Councillor Olsen, up to carry. In conclusion, I respectfully seek council support with the following. Firstly, to have this matter deferred for a month for council officers to consider the additional information regarding the childcare planning guidelines. Secondly, the council to accept the social impact comment and not request a social impact assessment. Thirdly, the issue of car parking to be dealt with by council at the next meeting. Thank you. Absolutely, so, yeah. So the, the parking is spread around, people are there five, ten minutes. Maybe. Yep. So, yeah, um, that should be from, and the education department has spoken to you about increasing numbers. 
Yes, so we um, have to go through a vigorous um, assessment and rating process. Um, there are guidelines in regards to how much indoor and outdoor space each child has to have. And once a DA is approved, we then apply to the Department of Education to then increase our numbers. And with that um, process, they actually come out on site and look to ensure that the facility is fit for purpose. We have all our checks in place. No worries. Councillor Sandra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Alana. That was um, a very good presentation. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, what do you. Why do you think the social impact assessment is not necessary? The location of the centre ensures it doesn't have a negative impact upon residential development. The centre is su surrounded by community and commercial developments. Um, the centre has never received any negative feedback um, from any members of the community. And I'm not aware of any complaints that have been made against the centre. Um, for the numerous requests that we have and the waiting list that we currently have, um, you know, it's and the de demographics. Um, it's really important that we we can get it across the line to support those children. You know, we've got so many children in our area that are at risk. That you know, we get phone calls from DCJ all the time saying we have to remove these children. The carers work we need before and after school care, um, and also a social impact assessment. I'm told is up to about ten thousand dollars, and we're a non for profit. We just can't afford that type of money. And no. What is involved in, in complying with the childcare planning going on? So the guidelines basically identify what I've already stated, the ratio um, for indoor-outdoor space. So those guidelines have to ensure that we have a certain amount of space for indoor, it's 3.25 metres square, outdoors 7 metres per child. So um, who are your clients, basically? Yeah, so we provide before, after and vacation care to eight different feeder schools in Cessnock LGA. Um, we also have two feeder schools from Maitland LGA. Um, we get phone calls all the time from parents that have children with high disabilities um, that other centres are just saying, it's all too much for us, we can't handle these children. And we're really fortunate that, you know, we are a part of the community centre, so we're an NDIS provider as well, so. Yeah. So, you know, what positive aspects will that centre bring to? So, positively, um, it's learned through play. It's um, a centre that, you know, it's intentional teaching, it's supporting, it's nourishing, it's giving, it's providing the breakage, um, the links that, you know, that they've, they've gone through. They've seen so much trauma. They've been witness to so many things that it's just unbelievable. So it's there to support and to nourish and to bring them back to a space that they feel comfortable in. And what would happen if the DA was not approved? If the DA isn't approved, it would be really, really sad. would have families that you know, they wouldn't be able to work, they wouldn't be able to keep their, their house. Um, it would force children to be at home unsupervised, which puts them high at risk. Thank you. Councillor Morse. Thank you, Councillor. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, well done, the speech very good. Thank you. Uh, I had the pleasure of driving past your place yesterday and I sat out front there for 10 minutes to 15 to have a look at what's going on. Uh, very clean, I'll give you that. It's not rubbish there, so obviously you've got the kids well trained to pick up all the rubbish up as they're going in. <laughs> uh, I can't see why all of a sudden this has come about. I know you explain you want more children there, and obviously it's for the well-doing of the town. Obviously, as you say, it's NDIS, has asked you to, to, to apply and go forward with your with schooling. And I can't see why we cannot uh, get behind this and uh, make a sure. question coming from this? Uh, was there a question coming? Yeah, the question was well, to the centre. It was yeah. through NDIS that she was asked to, to apply and, and raise the volume of children. And for the township of Curry, it, it makes common sense. Or, as like she says, it's houses, people's going to lose jobs, houses, and where's the children going? Thank you. 
Thank, uh, Councillor Langsdorf. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, do you anticipate um, an upgrade of facilities like toileting or sleeping arrangements um, in there with the increase of children? Yeah, so it's already there. The facility will already house that. On several of assessment and rating visits from the DET, they question us all the time as to why we're only at 55 capacity. Um, so yeah, the facility is already there to cater for um, that amount of children. Thank you. Councillors will now move to report uh, PE 38 2022. Uh, Councillor Hill. Thank you, Mayor Savell. Um, I'd like to move an alternate recommendation for this item, um, stating that one, the development application number 8 slash 2022 slash 149 slash 1 be deferred to enable draft conditions of consent to be prepared by council officers. And two, that the development application and associated draft conditions of consent be referred to the first available council meeting for consideration and determination. Is the motion seconded? Councillor Grein? Um, any debate? No debate. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Uh, We'll now call uh, Kim Furman, uh, speaking against the recommendation on report PE 39, 2022. Thank you, Ms. Furman. Oh. Three minutes with a reminder beep with one minute to go. Okay. Oh, good evening, everyone. I'm a bit nervous, so just bear with me. So, and I think I've spoken to a lot of people so far. I've emailed everybody one way or another. And of course, everyone's read my nine page submission, haven't you? Studied it carefully and looked at the pretty photos. Okay, all right. So, what it is, is we just want to build a home on 30 acres. It originally was farmland. So, it was, um, sorry, it was originally sold in 1888, so it dates right back. It's been cleared all that time. It was a sheep farm, it was cattle farm, and my father had it as an orchard. Okay, so it, does everyone remember Mulberry Valley Orchards? Yes. Yes, so my father died in 2010. So um, we just want to build a house. So, and obviously we've done things wrong, but I tried to do everything by the book. I'm that sort of person. So I applied through council, um, read all the legislation. So, sorry. And uh, um, the, the 1050 legislation, you can clear up to 10 metres of trees. The trees are regrowth, okay? Um, so even the council calls it the asset protection zone, okay? So um, we were advised by the fire report that we could clear up to 250 metres, which we've done, but we've actually cleared lantana, we've cleared weeds, we've cleared regrowth. So. It's not like we've taken out long, um, you know, um, seriously huge trees or anything like that because we haven't. And if you have a look at the property, there are 29 acres of trees still left. So we only cleared a tiny little bit. Actually, 29.75 acres still left. So there's a lot of trees there. And if you actually have a look at it from any, any viewpoint and even um, drone footage, you'll see the amount of trees that are left. So we had trouble with council because we didn't know what to do. So I've done it by the book. I've tried to do it by the book all the way through. Um, sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Um, and the council staff seemed to not know what to do either. So um, no one could advise me what we did wrong and how to do it. So OK, so I've done X wrong. That's fine. But tell me how to do it right. Like, where's the rules? Where's the policy? Where's the procedure? And the council staff don't know that either. So this is a, a problem with with the way the council runs, okay? So that it's not clear on how to do things properly. So, yeah, and if I've done it wrong, yeah, someone should have said, okay, you've done X, this is absolutely the wrong thing. Do Y. Where's the policy? Where's the procedure? So, okay, so for this amount of sophistication, it's not reflected in the council itself. 
It's not reflected in the roads, it's not reflected in Cessnock at all, okay? So maybe it needs to step up to this level because you, sorry. Uh, so moving for extension of time, Councillor Hill, seconded Councillor Hawkins, uh, all those in favour, uh, Councillors Jackson, Moores, Dunn, Burke, Grind, Sander, Hill, Hawkins, Painter, Wadden, Jurd and Saval, those against. Councillor Olsen, probably going to carry. Um, you have one further minute. No worries. So really what I'm asking you to do is just to pro approve the DA or to get it back on track. Okay, that's really all I'm asking. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions, Councillor Olsen? Uh, yes, thanks. thanks for that uh, insight. <clears throat> now, your property's got a building entitlement. Sorry? Your property has a building entitlement? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, oh, yes. Uh, what, what is the problem not being able to clear some land to build a house on, on the yeah. property? What is the problem? Do you, yeah. you don't know? I don't know. I did apply for a, a tree um, a permit, right, which cost $75. But they said it wasn't to do with council, it was to do with local lands. But local lands said it was to do with council. Okay. And so local lands said they would sort it out. So what, the clearing that you've already done yep. is lantana, undergrowth? Regrowth, regrowth trees. None of the larger trees have been knocked out. No. So they're all still there? They're all still there. And you, that will allow you enough space to have a house on that property? That's it. And not, and not um, be a fire hazard as well. It's the fire hazard that's the problem. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Let's thank Miss Women for her. <laughs> <laughs>
Due to the shortfall of funding and the land ownership issues, I believe there is a significant chance that the museum will never proceed in this location. Therefore, the planner's recommendations to not proceed with the heritage listing will be a lost opportunity to protect this important place for current and future residents of the Cessnock LGA. In conclusion, I urge councillors to consider the high likelihood of the museum not proceeding in this location and to resolve at this meeting tonight to, to vote to protect the roadway and to proceed with the planning proposal. My wife and I have spent nearly $20,000 in order to prepare the planning proposal because we and our neighbours believe in the value of this roadway. In previous reports, planners and councillors have agreed with us that this is a significant location that deserves to be protected on behalf of the Cessnock community. And I ask you tonight to keep sight of your previous position of support for this matter and hold fast in your support of the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions um, from councillors? Councillor Hill. Thank you, Shane, for the um, talking to us tonight. Um, do you agree that if the, uh, with the heritage consideration for Bills Hills Road, were it to be modified to only include, say, the section of road from uh, northbound from the south side of lot number four, so basically where the tree canopy over the road begins, where do you believe it would be suitable for the heritage uh, consideration to be modified to only include the stretch of road from where that begins northward? That, that's actually a compromise position that I have previously discussed with Council. I think uh, it, it is fair to say that the, uh, the, the section of roadway from the intersection of Wine Country Drive to the gateway of uh, Lot 4, number 66 Wills Hill Road, is already heavily disturbed. It has been widened and, and totally cleared. And, and on that basis, if that's something that councillors are prepared to consider, I would certainly find that a, a, suitable, uh, a suitable compromise. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please thank uh, Councillors will now move on to report PE 41-2022. Councillor Hill. Thank you, Mr. Val. I'd like to move an, an ultimate recommendation for this item as well, um, that the re original recommendation be modified to remove the word not so that it reads that council proceed with planning proposal 18 slash 2021 slash 3 Wills Hills Road and notify the Department of Planning and Environment of its decision and point to that the heritage proposal be amended to only include the northern section of Will Hills, Wills Hill Road starting from the southern boundary of lot 4 DP 1048155. Seconded Councillor Dunn. Seconding? Yes. Um, so, uh, any debate on the motion? No debate. We'll now put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Uh, Councillors, we'll now move on to consideration and adoption of all reports by Inglobo. Uh, Councillor Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Saval. Um, having read and considered the reports in the agenda relating relating to items PE 37 2022 de development application number 8 2021 22147-1 proposing to rebuild an existing service station and convenience shop PE 40-2022 appointment of external alternate member to the Hunter and Central Coast Regional Planning Panel uh, PE 42, uh, draft amendment to the Cessnock Citywide Infrastructure Contribution Plan. CC 56 um, slash 2022, easement request uh, being the northern portion of George Winter Park. Uh, CC 57 slash 2022, local government New South Wales annual conference 2022. CC 58. 2022 Accounting Treatment for the Rural Fire Service Fleet, CC59 Investment Report, uh, June 2022, CC60 2022 Resolutions Tracking Report, WI45, the New South Wales Severe Weather and Flood Grants, uh, WI46 2022 ro uh, Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Grant Funding Approvals, WI47 2022 the re-establishment of special event alcohol-free zone for the Australian Posty Bike Grand Prix, CO9 2022 donations to flood affected communities, CO10 uh, Merrill Minute 
10 slash 2022 parking advocacy advocacy for the amendment to rule 197 of the road rules 2014 co 11 2022 um, Merrill minute uh, 05 slash 2022 support for Hart Road North Ramps Hunter Express Road that council adopts the recommendations as printed for those items. So those reports seconded. Councillor Sander. Uh, so moving that way, uh, those in favour, it's unanimous. Uh, we will now move on to uh, report NI. For 2022 notice of intention to deal with matters in confidential session. Uh, someone moving that way, Councillor Sander, seconded Councillor Dunn. Uh, all those in favour? Um, sorry. Um, Councillor Olson. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor Savell, I, I'm, I'm a believer that this should be heard in open council. I've looked into the facts. And the Act states that when it should be in confidential session in Section 10A2, A, a personal matters concerning individuals other than councillors in this report, none other, none other are named. In I, alleged contravention of any code of conduct requirements under Section 440, I've looked through Section 440 and I can find none. There are no names of any individuals that are revealed in a report other than mine. My name will be released with the outcome of the vote in the resolution of council. Under Section 440, there are no guidelines which states it cannot be debated in open council. Plus, the guidelines for submitting a code of conduct complaint have been breached, as it states in the code of conduct procedures. How, how may a code of conduct complaint about a council official other than the general manager be made? 4.6, all code of conduct complaints other than relating to the general manager are to be made to the general manager in writing. This clause does not operate to prevent a person from making a complaint to an external agency. These two complaints were spoken about by at least four other staff members before we've been putting in, put into writing a written complaint from the department manager after persons making the alleged complaints have stated they did not care if they were submitted. All complaints are supposed to be confidential, but it is common knowledge among staff that these complaints have been made. For these reasons, these issues should be firstly removed from the agenda and or debated in open council. And I would uh, put up an amendment that we don't put this in uh, confidential session there on those reasons. Um, so we'll, we'll deal with the amendment. Is um, So the amendment you're putting forward be is that the... Um, well, uh, uh, effectively, you're actually... There's no reason for an amendment because the alternative not supporting the motion is to have the item voted on that had dealt with in um, in open council. This is an intention to move it into confidential. Um, so therefore, by not supporting that, it would keep it in open council. Uh, it so I I'm not sure that there's a need for an amendment of that nature, but I'd happy to take advice. Yeah, was getting confirmation from the general manager that that would be correct. Okay, so if the majority of councillors feel that it shouldn't be confidential, that can be held in open council, and there's no reason why it can't be held in open council. Um, I, if the majority, well, I'm not sure about the reasons why. I'd have to take advice on on that from the the general manager. Um, but my understanding is that all com like code of conduct complaints have previously been dealt with. Um, in a confidential way through a uh, confidential session of council and therefore reported yes. back to council and for that's, resolution. That's on the advice of, of staff. And I've read the section, read section 440 pretty thoroughly this last week and it doesn't state in there there's any reason why it has to be in confidential session if it's not naming any names. And there's no None of the councillors here know the names of any of the staff that are involved in these issues. They only know my name. And so I have no fear of being heard in open council so the, the, the recommendation of putting, putting in confidential session is just trying to hide it behind closed doors. When the report will come out, at the end of the day, whether I'm going to be sanctioned or not, it'll be, I'll be out there in the general public's eyes as being san sanctioned and no one else's name will be out there. If I don't get sanctioned, it'll be out there as well. But 
if it's going to be debated, it's about me, I'm quite happy for it to be debated about me in open council. So if the public want to sit here and listen to it, they can listen to it. Um, we we would have to take um, advice on on the um, from the office of local government on this matter um, to to get some advice on whether it can or um, cannot be dealt with in in open council. Um, so when will we get that advice? Um, yeah. Um, so the recommendation from um, the Acting General Manager is to uh, potentially defer consideration of this motion um, until later at the end of the meeting tonight so that um, we can potentially seek advice um, on that before we put it um, tonight. So we'll still get to deal with this one way or another later tonight, yep. um, but um, not immediately. So... Um, if, would a councillor be willing to move that this item be deferred till later at the end of the meeting? Councillor Moore seconded Councillor Painter. Uh, all those in favour? It's unanimous. Were you still wishing to speak on... Well, you'll speak later on something... Okay, uh, we'll now move on to uh, report number MM11, uh, 2022. Uh, so, our so I moved this way in, in the in the report um, with the uh, uh, additional points um, in in dot point two that the council acknowledges the service. Uh, commitment of staff, uh, council staff, New South Wales SES units, VRA Rescue, New South Wales, the New South Wales Police, Cessnock Leagues Club, and all emergency services uh, for the work in keeping the community safe during this flood event, and uh, and added on the additional point five that council work with the Cessnock Leagues Club to organise a community appreciation uh, event for all the service providers and emergency workers who assisted in the recent flood event. Um, our community has suffered significantly uh, from this flood event. It's the, the second natural disaster declaration we've had in, in four months, uh, and it takes its, its toll um, on not only infrastructure, but on the the community members that have had to live through this and what their their properties um, have suffered and and uh, and what the for the volunteers that have been out there and, and all the assistance work that they've provided and the times they've spent away from their their families uh, most of these are, are volunteers so they they're spending time away from work as as well to to really step up and, and help our community when it's needed. So uh, I think as council, it's important to acknowledge the, the work that they've done um, and thank them for, for that um, and to, uh, to, to work with the uh, Cessnock Leagues Club um, who were the evacuation um, centre for, for the community um, who uh, I've had discussions with about their considering a, an event, uh, and I think it's important for council to join with them um, and acknowledge uh, that. So uh, happy to open it up to councillors for any comments. No debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. We'll now move on to report number... Uh, MM12 2022 uh, Testers Hollow on Buchanan Road. Uh, one of the, uh, so I'll move that uh, report as printed. Uh, one of the significant impacts on, on our community has been around uh, infrastructure with, with Testers Hollow um, closed and, and that being our, our main thoroughfare through to Maitland. It has meant that a considerable amount of traffic has gone on to Buchanan Road. 
uh, which has damaged the, that server, server, the surface of the road uh, quite significantly. Uh, it's also, Buchanan Road has, over time, has grown with the development around the area and the, uh, now is the major route to the new maintenance hospital for residents coming from the Cessnock, um, LGA areas of Cessnock and, um, and Curry side. Uh, it's, people would mostly travel along Buchanan Road to, to get there. So, um, I think the road needs to be considered as a state road um, and the, the, um, we're asking the, the state government to consider what um, they're doing with Testers Hollow and, and um, the works going on there about whether uh, they want to reconsider the, the height or reconsider uh, the, the other options that may be available um, for for people to access out, have uh, flood-free access out of uh, Gilliston Heights. So um, I would, um, yeah, so I'd ask councillors to support this and um, I'm pleased to say I've spoken with the, the Mayor of Maitland, um, who's been able to move a similar um, resolution at his council uh, and is willing to uh, join with us in a delegation to the state government to talk about what we can do in this respect. So I'll move that way. Speaking on the motion, Councillor Olson. Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor Saval. I'd, I'd like, I, I'll support this motion tonight because I think it's crazy that you build a single lane, well not even a bridge, dam wall across uh, a floodway uh, and it's, the water goes over the top of it. That, uh, it seems crazy to me that we got, they got it wrong like they did in Windsor <coughs> and now we're, we're doing it again and I think that a four lane, there should be four lanes all the way from through Head and Greta from the start of Head, where you leave there, freeway right through to Maitland because if you ever drive into Maitland it's one of the worst drives you could ever do from here from Cessna off to Maitland. It's a single lane all the way and it's just a backlog of traffic and it's bumper to bumper and then when you get on Buchanan Road it's no different. It's, it's, it's uh, it's just bumper to bumper traffic. It's the roads deteriorating badly um, from all the extra traffic, and it's only going to grow as more houses go forward. Uh, everything, the hospitals over. You've got to go down Buchanan Road to get to the hospital. It, it's just craziness that they don't uh, look at these roads and start saying let's let's make them more user friendly and make them four lanes. They've got the, the freeways. They build the freeways, but they don't build the infrastructure once you get off the freeway. And then same as Tester's Hollow, we've been arguing about Tester's Hollow for I don't know how many years now. And it's, they finally said they're going to do something, but they, all they've done is build a damn wall. And I, I'm, I'm very disappointed with what they've done there. I'm very disappointed that they didn't get the heights right. Uh, I, I think anyone in the community would, would be crazy not to support getting that raised and making it a four lane road all the way through and same as Buchanan Road. And I think if we can get some action out of these, just the state government, we might be able to get some improvements around here uh, to make travelling a lot safer and uh, a lot more uh, uh, user friendly for all all concerned, whether it be you live in Maitland or you live in Cessnock. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Uh, next, Councillor Hill. Thank you, Mayor Val. Um, I will also like to voice my support for this um, mayoral minute tonight. I, as as a member of a resident of Head and Greeter, I have watched on as the, the new road is being built there across Testers Hollow and, and I don't think you could find a single resident from the Hunter Expressway to Testers Hollow that, that wouldn't, wouldn't agree that they didn't believe it was high enough um, the whole time the construction was happening and that's just now being proven by the recent flood. So um, I believe that a, a representation down to the Minister um, for these, these issues and, and others in regards to roads in the region is, is needed. Thank you. Thank you. With no further debate, we'll now put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. We'll now move on to report number uh, CC61-2022, waste levy exemption uh, areas affected by flooding. Moving that way. No motion to vote, Oh, sorry. Uh, Move on to motions of urgency. No, no motions of urgency. Now we will move on to report uh, CC61 uh, 2022 waste levy exemption 
areas affected by flooding. Moving that way, Councillor Hill, seconded Councillor Sander. Any debate? Councillor Jurd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is not really completely a debate. I just wanted to say thank you for bringing this um, list to attention. There is no reason to not vote on this one. I have residents asking for this to happen and had spoke to the general manager the day before. So I was really pleased when I got the phone call that you got onto this straight away and had this opened up for the residents because it's not fair that not only they got flooded, that they then would have to pay to dump the rubbish. So I'm really glad that you got that done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jodd, for those comments. Um, we'll now put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Uh, moving on to report WI 48 2022, uh, implementation of LGA signage strategy, illuminated signage. Moving that way, Councillor Hill seconded uh, Councillor Burke. Uh, any debate? On this one? No, no debate. We'll put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Uh, no, unanimous. Yep. Uh, moving on to report WI 49 2022, bus shelter advertising. Moving that way, uh, Councillor Grind, second to Councillor Hill. Uh, any debate? On this one, no debate. Uh, we'll put that motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Uh, we'll now move on to report BN 21 2022, uh, addressing homelessness and basic services for the needy in Cessnock LGA. Uh, call Councillor Painter. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I'd just like to on top of this um, motion that um, I think this is, um, as it's been pointed out to me by Council staff, this is not a, a council responsibility. Sorry, before you speak on the, sorry. Oh, really, okay. No, sorry. Second, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking on the motion. Yeah. The council writes to the Minister for Families and Communities Disability Services, the Honourable Natasha McLaren Jones, MLC, and State Member for Cessnock. Ms. Clayton Barr advocating for the state government to invest in provision of laundry and showering facilities for the homeless within the LGA, um, Central LGA, initially on a trial basis in an appropriate location. Okay, uh, speaking next, Councillor, were you speaking further? No, no, no. Sorry, speaking next is uh, Councillor Olson. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ned. Uh, look, I, I think this is a worthy cause uh, to look at something like a maybe a mobile uh, facility that we can move around the area, not be set in one area where it can cause a problem of um, people hanging around, but move it around the community. It would have been very helpful recently with the floods. It could have been utilised in, in uh, areas, maybe at Wollongby or even Broke, or we could share it with other local communities. It, it's something that we need to look after those less fortunate, less fortunate than us. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a society where we have homeless, and homelessness is growing right across the region. Um, I grew up, and luckily, I didn't see much homelessness around Cessna, but the more I get around the community now, I see more of it. And I don't think this will create any issues. Uh, I believe we've got enough community groups out there that would um, support and utilise this service to help these people. And I think uh, what Councillor Payne has done here and put it into writing uh, is a good cause for the community. And uh, I'm sure you can, as he says in his rationale there, Cessna Correctional Centre do make these type of things. And, and I know that, it, that you could get one of these made for probably under $100,000, which is not a lot of money in the scheme of things when you're talking about how many people you could be helping. Um, we have people out there that raised, uh, to do a lot of 
um, supplying of food and uh, different items to people, clothing, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is just one little extra help that we, we as a community can put back in back into helping these people that's in need. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Watton. Thank you, Mayor Saval. <clears throat> First of all, I just want to um, applaud Councillor Painter for bringing this to the Council's attention. Uh, it's fantastic. I, it's often seen as, it, it could be seen as debatable, this is a Council issue, and I say 100% yes it is. We're in the role of civic leadership. We need to lead our town, our area, our LGA in this manner. Uh, it's definitely an area that I'm personally passionate in. Uh, I've invested a lot of time professionally working in this area with the needy and the homeless. For young people, people for example, you're looking at the Samaritans for uh, emergency accommodation, maybe Catholic care, I'll be able to help out with some certain things, neighbourhood centre. That's about it. When you're looking at adult people in our society, there's not much out there. You're going to chip off to Newcastle, essentially. I reckon there's ways and means around making it like a really effective operation. Uh, I hear the concerns of Councillor Al Olsen about you know, potentially being a stagnant section of our community, you know, risk of being able and be a bit of a detriment to the community. However, if there was something mobile that was done well, we have so many great community resources and people in, in the area. Uh, I also just want to put it out there, I, at the risk of, you know, like, professionally, I've worked a lot in this area, but also on a personal level, uh, at the risk of, like, not, you know, uh, too much self exposure, I suppose you could say, but once upon a time, I was actually, you know, homeless. So, uh, going back to, you know, when I was younger, it was, certainly wasn't a lifestyle choice. It certainly wasn't, you know, just straighten up and get a job. I was able to move ahead because there were services available for me to, you know, link into. And I just want to bring it to council's attention when you're voting for something like this, that you can actually help people in the community in a real meaningful way and help them actually get on with their, their lives. So, thank you. Councillor Dunn. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Saval. Um, yeah, this, this is a fantastic motion and, and it does address an issue within the community that is in fact growing, especially over the last three years. So I, I would like um, Councillor Painter to consider a second dot point there. Um, Councillor Painter, that um, a second dot point that possibly reads something to the effect of that the general manager report back to council any options for usage of council facilities to meet this need. Um, so, if that's okay with you, I'd like to add that in as well. So, that the general manager... So we'll just get the wording to that. Yeah. So that, that the general manager report back to council. Any options for usage of council facilities to meet this need? Options for and, and, hopefully, and hopefully with that, um, Councillor Painter, there, there are, you know, there, there are areas within um, council's assets that, that do have hot showers and there are a few of them and there, there may be an opportunity for us to do a lot of this in-house with a liaising with, with other organisations and hopefully the state government can come back and, and do something with us to promote that. But I think that there is a lot of um, opportunity for us to actually do a lot of this ourselves. Um, so the um, mover, Councillor Painter, has accepted that Councillor Watton is the so you're accepting that point as well. Um, so it will now become part of the motion. Uh, any further debate, Councillor Sander? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just want to re reiterate um, Councillor Dunn's um, extra dot point because Council does have some facilities that we'd like to investigate. Um, we've got swimming pools, we've got large um, amenities blocks, we've got all sorts of things that are used seasonally. So there might be an opportunity that um, we could take on board that, and if the general manager can bring back a report, that'd be great for council and the homeless. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Painter, in closing debate. Yeah, just like to say, thank the um, my constituents and fellow councillors for the um, also like the support for this motion. I'm out in the community in people's homes um, every day. I work with um, homeless people um, in the past and. Um, and like I said, in the rationale, it just gives them a chance to shower with the basic needs um, that they deserve as members of our community, disadvantaged members. If we can't look after the um, 
most disadvantaged members of the community. There's not much of the community. So, um, so, um, so thank you. Um, put the motion. Thank you. We'll now put the motion. Uh, those in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Councillor Painter, for bringing this to council's attention. Uh, we'll now move on to report BN uh, 22 2022. Uh, Councillor Olson. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Saval. The motion is that the general manager supply an itemised report to council of contributions. Um, it should be 29 million now because it's, it's, I noticed in the report tonight it's 29 million. Currently held in council's accounts listing what areas these funds are identified for improvements. The re report is to contain total funds for each project. Years money has been in council's accounts, total <coughs> funds spent per year on what projects, any plans for future expenditure. This report is to come back to the next council meeting and then I, I, point six, that a report come back, to, back every year in February instead of May, change that word to February, for reference before setting the budget. I'll put that motion to, towards council because I've been asking for many a time. So is the motion seconded, yes. Councillor Judd? I've been asking plenty of times to get this, uh, these figures to us uh, for a number of years. And I guess can never seem to be able to get them off council. They say they're in the computer or on the system online somewhere. I never seem to be able to find them. I just I want to know that if we've got twenty nine million dollars sitting there. And it's not, we're not the only council that has this sort of money sitting around. So our bigger councils have got a lot more. Uh, smaller councils have got a lot less. But it was a, it's a concern to the ratepayer that if you've got money sitting there and we're not utilising the funds to the best of our ability and that they sit there for years and years and years, what, how are they helping the ratepayer? So I need to know, and I think every council should need to know, how much we have sitting in there for what items they are listed for, whether it be for pools or libraries or whatever, or for roads or drainage, whatever it is for, and what area the location is for. Because we can look at that report and say, well, look, there's a million dollars sitting there. All we need to do is put another 500,000 to it. We can, we can achieve this. We can get it done. It's only kind of cost us 500,000, not 1.5. We get things done. We can utilise this money for what it's been put in for. Like I remember our council, something like 30 years ago, took $80,000 off a developer and never spent it. Never spent it on the road they were supposed to do. And if we were going to do it now, it would cost us half a million dollars. So we didn't know it wasn't spent as a council. So this way, we, it's an open and accessible thing to every councillor. The general public can know what we've got the money there for. And when they ask us, we can identify it and show them okay, we're looking at how we're going to utilise these funds because not all developer contributions are being spent. And some of them sit there for 10 and 20, 30 years. And we need to be able to utilise these funds. And if we don't know exactly what's there or what it's identified for, we as councillors can't ask the staff to start looking at how we spend this money. We need to know, not just hidden away for just the staff to know. Thank you. Thank you. No. With no further debate, I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Um, moving on to report BN 23 2022, uh, Heritage Tourism, uh, called Councillor Olson. Yeah, uh, Mayor Savell, thank you. Um, my motion is that the General Manager organise a meeting with the Cessna Chamber of Commerce to work on improving Vincent Street's appeal with the possibility of improving the current buildings to heritage style to encourage more businesses to open and visitors to utilise the area. I'll put that motion up. So is the motion seconded? Councillor Watton? Yeah. I'll put this motion up because I've seen our council try different things uh, over the years to make our main street improve and they might be improvements but it hasn't improved the actual usage of our main street and I know um, I travelled in America once and I went into this community that was a thrive of activity in the main street and I asked the tour guide what, what's the go, why is everyone here, you've got the major shopping centre over there, he said because it's heritage, 
He said they've rebuilt everything in here. They've made everything look like it was years ago. And the businesses have come to support that. And it's got the people in here. You can go travel around Australia. You can, you can go to all the big W's and Kmart's all you want. But something different is what we need in our main street at the moment. Something that will attract people to come into the main street. We've got plenty of great cafes and we've got uh, some great shops in the main street. But they don't get utilised enough and there's not enough tr foot traffic to be able to see everything filled up. We could get maybe some antique shops in the main street. Something that's different to other centres. You've yeah, only got Anthony Morpa from have a look how it, it goes so well with what he has down there. And I think this is something that we should be encouraging um, the Chamber of Commerce to look at, to work in with, um, work in with uh, council, to look at some different ways. Um, we spend a lot of money, we, we support the, the Chamber of Commerce with over $40,000 a year. Maybe they should be supporting us as well. And um, saying, instead of just organising event, one event a year, maybe they should be helping and looking and talking at shop owners about how we make our our main street appealing, appealing to a lot of people, appealing to especially our tourist industry, which is which we talk about is how important it is to us. And if it's so important to us, we should be tapping into that with something different in our main street. So that's just my ideas. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, and it's, it's pleasing to see that we're talking about tourism. Uh, only two meetings ago, uh, Councillor Olsen voted against uh, $50,000 for, $50, for tourism uh, grants, so it's, it's great to have something uh, come to this meeting that entices uh, tourism in our local area, and for many years now, uh, Council and local chambers, not just Cessnock, have work towards the facade improvements of our, our local buildings. One of the problems that we have is that the business in the building isn't generally the business uh, the building owner. Uh, there's a large proportion, and I would say more than 60% of the buildings in our local main street in the business CBD is actually owned by people that don't live in the local government area, which is a concern. It's something that Council, and I know uh, the advanced Cessnock City partners uh, certainly work on. Council and uh, Cessnock Business Chamber have partnered in the past uh, and still do to work on the vacancy rate of businesses in the community. Uh, we encourage businesses to, to open, um, to bring new businesses to town and, and as Councillor Olsen has alluded to, so, you know, something different, something unique. When the, first, when the uh, program first started, uh, which is the Business Matrix program, which is headed up by the Cessna Chamber of Commerce, not just an event, uh, the vacancy rate was around 30%. That meant that 70% of the shop fronts were full. After three years of the Cessna Chamber of Commerce working on this program, uh, the sh vacancy rate is now 15%. So we now have 85% of the shops in this town have something in them. And that's really exciting because people are confident in being able to open a shop uh, in, our, in our CBD. What Councillor Olsen is asking for in this motion already exists. Uh, Heritage listed buildings are able to apply for funding for maintenance works and building code upgrades. It is there. Uh, so if there's a heritage listed building in this main street that we can throw money to, uh, then we're able to do that already. Uh, we're able to uh, go through that process. We have a policy here at Council uh, that is able to do that. I think what's important is uh, business attraction and retention is much greater than the facade. Uh, the Economic Development Unit here at Council are doing some amazing work. Uh, some of the projects are undertaken by Council. Uh, some of them are undertaken by various uh, organisations in this local area. But what we need to drive tourism is, and business growth and employment is a local spend. And council for many years, and particularly through COVID, which was really hard for businesses uh, in this area, had a focus on a, a shop local program. Uh, and this certainly uh, did see an increase uh, having someone like me, I, I do speak to businesses 
on a daily basis. And the programs that council are currently doing from the economic development unit are working. Uh, they are seeing uh, more foot traffic. They are seeing more locals come in rather than going to the big shopping centres at Charlestown or Green Hills. We are seeing more locals uh, spend more locally but that's not because of what the buildings look like or that there's a big art sculpture in the main street. That's because of the work council and all of the local chambers are doing in the region on multiple projects. All of the local chambers of commerce work collaboratively with council under the advanced Cessnock City Partners. I think that this motion tonight is a little bit horse before the car, or the car before the horse. I think there needs to be a report come back to council about the availability of funding that's already existent. Uh, and I think that we need to have an understanding of what programs are currently available uh, that are already have dollar amounts sitting next to them uh, for heritage uh, listed buildings, which will help uh, for tourism. Then once that's established, uh, council would be able to organise those meetings and there's no problem with those meetings. I think they're fantastic. But we want them to be meaningful. Uh, we want them to be uh, having a, a positive outcome. So I think there needs to be some information brought back before that can actually happen. Thank you. Councillor Watton. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Saval. Uh, I'd love to support that to, to find out more about exactly what Advance Cessnock is doing to make that a bit more um, accessible to the wider community. I know of some things that are out there. I'm not engaged in myself personally. I'd like to see some reports come back as to you know exactly where the money is and where it's been spent. I actually have not looked into it in much depth, in, in, you know, personally. Uh, I just want to throw any support I can behind making our town look better. If that's the you know raising more attention to the, the issue, um, I'm fully supportive of any major plans that Cessnock has to beautify the entrance of both ways uh, for Cessnock. We're an amazing town, a lot of charm. It's unique. We don't want to be a cookie cutter town. We want to be you know, Sassnock. I would just love to see some money thrown. Like, I would love to see the reports to come back. I'd like to really like, have a really good look at that. And even implement things like special events through the year, such as, you know, Christmas even. Um, it's a bit of a, a bugbear for me when you know, I go through Christmas, and I'm not a Christmassy person, <laughs> but kids love it. And when you go through Maitland, you've got the soldiers up there, and it's an attraction. It's something there, and it's something if we can keep the conversation going, keep bringing it up, and keep, you know, looking at the figures where it's all going. Uh, I'm supportive of anything to do with that to make our town look better, more attractive, more appealing. I think it goes hand in hand in hand. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sander. Thank you, Mr. Val. Um, in listening to all the other councillors in regard to um, the heritage um, areas of, of our city, um, I would like to propose an alternate recommendation um, in this regard. And I think Robin can put it up there that number one, that the general manager bring back a report to council on the following matters. That the current heritage funding available for facade improvement, what has the take up of business, of scene of businesses for such funding? How do council cr currently promote this funding to the business chamber and the community? And what policies and procedures are currently in place relating to the heritage of business facades? What other funding may be available to encourage facade improvement in our city? And number two, that a briefing be organised for our as councillors for below, for the below. An update on council's lane lane improvement program, an update from the economic development unit relating to business growth in the Cessnock business community. What programs the EDU have delivered and plan to deliver to support businesses and employment growth in Cessnock. And an update from the advanced Cessnock partners on projects, programs and events currently being undertaken to improve business and employment growth in our city. Thank you. Uh, yes, so I'm happy to second it, Councillor yeah. um, Hawkins. Yeah, um, I'm, I might just ask um, the mover of the motion um, if we can just change the, the, the wording slightly in point 2B 
um, to remove um, uh, from uh, the economic development unit. So it just says an update relating to business growth in, in Cessna um, and yeah, then just what programs are removed um, the EDU in the second point um, as the, the business unit will be up to the general manager to determine. Yep, that's fine. Uh, and um, and update on, um, so point C, um, an update, uh, so removed from the advanced Cessna partners um, on project. Yep. yep, thank you. Uh, comfortable with that mover and seconder of the amendment? Yeah, being delivered. Um, being delivered. Two bees. What programs have been delivered? So, uh, point two B. Um, two B. Yeah. yeah, have been delivered. Thank you. Okay, um, so that's now um, we're debating the amendment. Um, so we'll move on. Um, as Councillor Olson will have a right of reply on, on this, so I might move to Councillor Moores. Speaking on the amendment, then Councillor Olson. I'd like to speak on this amendment. I, like uh, what I started out with, with my motion was something to start a talk fest basically to get things moving. Um, we have a town coordinator that gets paid forty something thousand dollars a year by our council, and and uh, I very see very little being happening with that. But um, and I see very little foot traffic in the main street. So this was about my motion was about getting getting talks started and interested in doing something different for the main street. This is just gone bigger than Ben Hur. Um, I don't know why, because with everything that the motions put up there, I, I, it's just it's just craziness what we've, we're going from, from asking a, a, our Chamber of Commerce to have a meeting with the general manager to discuss looking at heritage style, to all this stuff here that's going to create more work for in, internal staff, but no, no extra work for the um, Chamber of Commerce. It's all for council. And I, I just don't understand why we pay a town coordinator. That's the case. Uh, he's supposed to be working. Councillor Olson, can I just um, bring to your attention and, and make it clear to, to you and the broader community that council does not employ a town coordinator? No, we pay him. No, we, we don't pay a, a town coordinator. I, so I'll, um, I'll clarify it. I'll clarify it. That the, um, the Chamber of Commerce uh, employs a town coordinator and not council, yep. so just we, making that The Chamber of Commerce everyone. employs a town coordinator who is a councillor, and council pays the Chamber of Commerce 46000 a year, whatever it is, to have that town coordinator. Now, I have, I've tried different ways of doing that, making that money being accountable, and it never happens. But now here we are. I had a motion there that might have created a bit of work for that person, and we're going to change it. So all the work's done in council. It seems it's a shame that he's allowed to sit in here and talk on it and be a part involved in this debate, but that's our council and I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that later. But I still don't... I don't all this a change of, my, of my, my emotion is just gone crazy. Um, I wish I'd seen it before tonight. Maybe I could have uh, had a bit more time to read it, but I didn't get that information. So whatever you've done behind closed doors, good on you, and hopefully something happens in the main street. Uh, speaking, Councillor Moores. Thank you, Councillor uh, Mazavel. Uh, yes, there is. I, I can say there is a lot of uh, things happening in the town, and uh, also, as you can see, that there's the old um, Lowe's building that's been just been revamped up, which makes it look very smart. I can't see why we can't put some sort of an award on for a shop appraisals who's taking interest in the shop. It's understandable unless they're owners of the shop. Well, they're not going to do anything to it because they're paying enough rent without starting going outside painting. 
But before I think we should start to be throwing stones, we should be looking at ourselves, because of the gateway to the vineyard next to the Performing Arts Centre, which we just had a big grant given to us, is a, one of the most derelict buildings in Vincent Street, which has got no gutter on it. It's got tin flapping around on the side of the roof, and it's a disgrace. So we should be looking at ourselves as well. Thank you. Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I think uh, with Counts what Councillor Watton has said is, is a great uh, pick-up in the previous debate was around... Uh, you know, things happening, although he may not like Christmas time, um, having uh, window displays, uh, you know, the local local chambers do those types of things. So I think it's maybe getting back to some of the basics. And I think that having these reports and briefings uh, will allow us to have an understanding of what activities are already currently being undertaken. Uh, this council has invested heavily in uh, the laneways project. Uh, I know that some of the local chambers have... Uh, done some of the laneways, but so is this council. So it would be good to know where that improvement program's up to because that's pretty much what Council Olsen's asking for is for things to happen in the main street that attract visitors uh, that support our tourism economy. So the laneways are a great way of doing that. Um, I know that uh, it was funding dependent, uh, but I think having a briefing on the laneway improvement program will allow us to have an understanding of what needs to happen to progress that a little bit more. And I also think that we need to progress the green space. The big master plan that we have down in Cooper Street that allows us to have a space where we can have buskers and night markets and those types of things. And I know that uh, there aren't too many people that are happy with uh, what's currently sitting in Cooper Street. And I agree with it. Though the grand plan or the, the plan that we have on books at the moment is to have that into an amazing green space that allows our community and visitors to come together, that allows us to grow uh, not only with our, within our community but also our businesses, uh, allows us to grow through tourism. So if we're going to do anything, let's talk to the local chambers of commerce about that how we can have a direct influence on business growth because heritage tourism uh, is just a small aspect of it where we've already got things happening. And I think if we can talk to uh, key stakeholders about those types of things, we'll see a much more positive outcome. Thank you. Uh, we'll now put the amendment. So uh, those in favour of the amendment, uh, Councillor Jackson, uh, not more, Dunn, Burke, Grine, Sander, Hill, Hawkins, Painter, Watton and Saval, those against, Councillor Moores, Councillor Olson and Jurd, uh, I'll declare it carried. The amendment now becomes the motion. Uh, we'll now put the, the motion. Uh, all those in favour? Unanimous. Okay, councillors will now uh, return to uh, report NI4 2022, uh, the deferred notice of intention to deal with matters uh, in confidential session. Uh, I will call the general manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saval. Um, in the research in the interim period, um, I would refer councillors to Clause 7.47 of the Model Code of Conduct, sorry, the Model Procedures for Handling Matters Under the Code of Conduct, which is based upon the um, model as put out by the Office of Local Government, which council has adopted. And Clause 4.7 states, the council is to close the meeting to the public to consider the final investigation report in cases where it is permitted to do so under Section 10A of the Local Government Act 1993. The Local Government Act 1993, Section 10A, deals with which parts of a meeting can be closed to the public. Part 1 states a council or a committee of council of which all members are councillors may close the public the meeting to so much of them, sorry, may close to, to the public 
so much of the meeting as it comprises the discussion of any matters listed in sub clause two or the receipt of or discussion of any information so listed. Sub point two, so this is 10A2, part set is the matters and information are the following and lists a number of items. Part A of that is personnel matters concerning particular individuals other than councillors. And more importantly, part I is alleged contraventions of any code of conduct requirements applicable under section 440 of the Local Government Act, of which um, is covered also in the um, procedures. So it is quite clear that council is to close these um, discussions and have them in closed meetings. The matter of tonight um, may involve staff. I'm not going to say it does, because certainly it is to go into closed session. Um, however, under part I, it is quite clear that in con alleged contributions of the code of conduct requirements applicable um, are to be um, discussed in closed session. And that is certainly borne out in 7.47. Four seven of the procedures. I know Councillor Olson mentioned earlier about personnel matters containing uh, concerning individuals. Um, any code of conduct complaint can be by any person. It doesn't have to be a council employee or another councillor. Um, so I would certainly um, not say that the personnel matters in this case, sorry, in, in other cases, all cases would necessarily involve council staff. Um, Councillor Olson has stated that they do, and in that case, um, that would certainly mean that part A, subsection A of two, would also come into play. So it's quite clear from the reading of all that, that you should be considering this matter in closed session, particularly if you're going to have um, confident, com conversations around the items in that final report and then certainly whatever the decision of council is, um, when you come back into the open forum, would be a public document. But until that point in time, um, it is my understanding and belief that everything should be confidential, and that is certainly something that is um, mentioned throughout the Code of Conduct procedures. And I note also Councillor Olson had mentioned earlier about um, a flow of information within the organisation that led to the Code of Conduct complaint the code of conduct complaint that was um, made to and accepted by the general manager at the time is the one that is actually being referenced in this final determination. So, uh, question, Councillor Olson. It's it's um, there's no other names in this report visible to anyone. They've all been blacked out. If they're not, if they if then if they're going to be blacked out but not mine isn't, why can't it be in open session? It's only, it only says, per, says personal matters concerning individuals other than councils, none are named. So why can't that be in open session? Uh, it was also the second uh, point that the general manager Yeah, made so can we tell me point, under uh, section 440 what is, what, where it says in a section, alleged intervention of any code of conduct requirements under section 440. Yes. What are in the se section 440 says it has to be in confidential session. So I, I think, um, General Manager, I want to provide more comment. Thank you. Um, the reference to Section 440 is talking about code of conduct complaints, how they're made and, and the like under the Act. They are certainly dealt with in relation to the model code of conduct and certainly the model procedures. So the reference that you're, you're having there in Part 10A is in reference to complaints made under this section. So that's, what it's brought, that's why it's brought back to, as saying we should be in confidential so session. We're, we're not here to debate the, the general manager's uh, advice, but uh, the advice I think has been clear that this should be dealt with in confidential uh, session if, if under if, the Code of Conduct procedures. I'll, I'll move a motion of dissent in that ruling. Well, there's, there's nothing to move it motion of dissent in. It's not a ruling. It's a... It was a, just a ruling. It was just, you just said it was a ruling. No, I, I just said that was the advice from yeah. the general manager. You can... Uh, the the motion that um, was moved before and we... Um, 
well, then we I'll... might get it moved again. Um, we'll go through the process, and uh, if you don't support it going into uh, confidential, which would be against the advice of the general manager, uh, that he stated in regards to, to that's what the requirements are under the procedure, um, you would vote against that motion. Uh, someone moving the way to put it into uh, confidential, so moved Councillor Grine, seconded Councillor Sander. Yeah, I'd like to speak against that, Debate, Councillor Olsen. Yeah, I'd like to speak against that. The reports come out to the councillors and every every one else's name except mine has been blacked out. So the only person that's affected by this report is myself. At the end of the day, the recommendation will come out with my name in it. There is no need for it to be hidden away in closed session because I'm not scared of being in open council. There's no other person named in this report that anyone can identify to and it should be debated in open council. If people have got a problem with what I say and do, they should be, they should be at least able to stand up and be made held accountable. It, to hide behind closed doors is just making it so easy for people to, to come in here and say I'm a bad person and then put it out there when, yet when you read the report and if you read the whole report you'll find how many lies are in it and I'm very disappointed if it goes into confidential session. Uh, Councillor Burke. Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. Can I just get a clarification via the General Manager that what you've just mentioned, point I, isn't got, hasn't got anything to do with the person, the names, the personnel. Point I is directly related to council dealing with the final report of a code of conduct, and that's why it goes into a confidential session. General Manager. Um, thank you, Mayor Saval. Um, yes, that was my point exactly, Councillor Burke. You probably said it a little bit more eloquently than I did. But Thank you, uh, General Manager. Mr Mayor, that's why it needs to go into a confidential session. Uh, if it was in an open session, then we would discuss it in an op open session. But if this council was to vote against us going into a confidential session, then we would be in breach of the Code of Meeting Practice of the uh, Office of Local Government. So if we were to vote against this, this has got nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with the names in the report, names blacked out in the report, the reason that I would be voting uh, for this motion before me is because point I tells me that uh, uh, a final report of a code of conduct has to be, not behind closed doors, has to be in a confidential session so this council can then uh, discuss it. And that's the way... I'll be voting tonight. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Uh, with no further debate, I'll now put the motion uh, on uh, report number NI4 2022. Uh, those in favour? Uh, Councillor Jackson, Dunn, uh, Burke, Grind, Sander, Hill... Hawkins and Saval, those against. Councillor Moores, are you you're voting? You, you have to vote. Come on. So, uh, Councillor Moores, uh, Painter, Watton, Olsen, and uh, Jurd, I'll declare the motion carried. Uh, Council will. Uh, have someone uh, move to move us into uh, confidential session. Moved Councillor Burke, seconded Councillor Sander. Uh, all those in favour? Uh, Councillor Jackson, uh, Moores, uh, Dunn, Burke, Grind, Sander, Hill, Hawkins and Saval. Those against? Uh, Councillor Painter, Watton, Olsen and Jurd. Uh, I'll now, we'll now move 